Hey everyone, I'm Robert Hall. If you're new here, consider subscribing if you wanna see a lot of videos about lighting and photography. In today's video, I wanna talk about counterweights and specifically what I think is the best counterweight option available, but talk about some of the pros and cons of using different types. On the left, you can see this Manfrotto sandbag. This is a sandbag that comes with this Manfrotto boom stand over here. So it's actually not designed for the stand that I have it attached to, but it's really simple in that you can put sand in here. I actually have weights in here. This was from an old weight set that my wife had. We've got two and a half and five pound plates two of each in here for 15 pounds total. This one's nice, it's a very durable material. It also has double Velcro so that you can throw sand in there and not really worry about it leaking. Although I hate using actual sand and we'll get into the why of that. Very simple design in that it can easily be thrown over a stand leg and it's also got this clip which Attaches fine to that, but it's actually for the end of this stand, which has a hole for that clip to be attached. It's a really simple sandbag solution that gets the job done. Number two, this is your run of the mill sandbag. It's got a similar design to that Manfrotto bag in that it's kind of creased in the middle so that you can set it directly over a stand leg. But there are two things that I dislike about actual sandbags. One, I don't know if you just saw that, a little bit of sand just leaked out and I'm, I'm literally about to throw this away. It's cracked open. You can see we've got gaff tape over the uh, first time that there was a little crack in it, but there's already another little crack. Eventually, these things tend to break down and start leaking sand over everything. Now, if you've got one that you can refill, I highly recommend you put your sand in a Ziploc bag inside of the sandbag. That way, when this thing inevitably starts to break down, you don't have a pile of sand in the trunk of your car. So this one, the sand is actually inside plastic bags, but it's still leaking. So even using plastic bags on the inside of sandbags isn't a guarantee that you're not gonna have a mess one day. The other thing I really dislike is for their weight, they're rather bulky. They take up quite a lot of space. You can see that this is just larger than the Manfrotto bag that has weight plates in it because the weight plates are way more dense. So sand is a little negative in that regard. I'm gonna go throw this out. Next up, if you're using some type of lighting where it's a pack and head system or a mono light with a remote head attachment, in this situation we have the Explorer 600 Pro with its XP600 extension head that allows you to run this cable in between it, makes for a really powerful boom. Um, one thing you can do is use a super clamp. There's tons of different super clamps. I think it is the best piece of grip equipment that you can buy because in this situation we can use the light itself to be the counterweight to its own head, which allows me to stretch this out really far. And right now this stand isn't even closed. I just have it perfectly balanced. So one of the cool things about this is I can bring this further up on the stand or further back. I can really dial in the weight to make sure that this is securely balanced. Whereas if I had the Manfrotto bag attached to the back of this pole, I have 15 pounds at the exact end of the pole, no matter what. So that means I only have one specific length that I can put this out in order for it to work. And that might not be the light position that I'm looking for, the light stand position that I'm looking for. So having something that you can modify by moving up and down the stand is a lot better for getting a really nice balance than using a sandbag that is positioned at the end of a lighting stand. All of this brings me to my favorite solution, which unfortunately also happens to be the most expensive, and that is this. This is also by Banfrotto, and this is their 10 pound counterweight. They come in three pound, 10 pound, and 15 pound options. Very simple, just a big old clamp on the back that you can tighten down, similar to the super clamp arm that we have. And then you've got a very dense weight that you can put pretty much anywhere. Now, if we go back to the sandbag, this is probably about 12 pounds and this is 10 pounds. And we could have a 15 pound version of this that would still be less than half the size of this sandbag, which is why I think these are so much better than a sandbag. Also, this isn't going to break on you. There's nothing complex or fragile about this and it's most likely going to live a lot longer than me. Now, if you're not using a pack and head like this, where you can kind of repurpose the pack to be the counterweight to the head, then 
This works great for balancing out some type of light. Now, if we we're using something heavy like a six pound strobe at the end of this, then we'd probably wanna go up to the 15 pound counterweight. Now, I've already mentioned how the Manfrotto counterweight has significant advantages over the sandbag because it's almost indestructible. It's never gonna break on you like a sandbag. It takes up less space and there's no chance it's ever gonna pour sand in the back of your car. But I actually think the biggest advantage to using it is just how small and compact it is, allowing it to get into some positions that you really can't accomplish with sandbags. So let's say we're outside working on location and we've got a light with a modifier on it. This isn't likely to ever blow over outdoors, but let's imagine for a second that we had a 35 inch softbox on there. That might actually blow over. Everyone tells you to point your light modifier directly over a stand leg to give yourself maximum stability. And that's good because if there's any wind at the back of this, there's just really no chance that this weight is ever going to start falling forward. But this does present an issue because with the soft box, there is a chance that it can be blown over backwards. When the front of it catches wind, it's very easy to tip backwards. Now you can use a sandbag and this is pretty much the only position that you can put it. And it does a great job at holding it, but again, comes with all those negatives that I previously talked about. Whereas this thing can go all the way down by the front of the leg. And just this slight shift forward, plus the density aspects, just means that this is so much more leverage to prevent this from going backwards anywhere. You can also put it directly in the center. And because all that weight is on the center column, it just gives you added stability in all directions. More sand, probably from this one. Yep, this one's leaking too. I purchased my first one of these a couple months ago and we already have a bunch of sandbags so I kind of thought I'd replace them as we go. But honestly, I'm about to order five more of these things just so that these are the only counterweights that we have in the studio because I like them so much more than the sandbags and other options that we have. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, keep on shooting.